and welcome to African farming. I've always wondered what came first, the chicken or the egg? That's a question as old as time, but I've got the inside scoop. Dino Mokoshi from Winterfeld has more chickens than I can count, and perhaps she knows the answer. So let's go meet her. Dino Mokoshi ran several businesses in the hospitality sector before deciding to follow her passion in farming. She soon realized that part-time just won't cut it. And so she dedicated herself completely to building her own empire. Like all farmers, she has faced her fair share of bumps in the road. But with the support of her family, she has learned that to make a cake, you've got to break a few eggs. Now her enterprise boasts laying hens, sheep, goats, and kettle. As an aspiring female farmer, I am thrilled to get the chance to speak to successful women in the sector. How's Dineo? You are one of those women. Yes. You ran successful businesses. You had a catering company, a tourism enterprise, and then you changed direction to become a farmer. Yes. Why is that? I look at it farming, and I saw farming is the way I want to go. I told myself I want to do all my things at one place. So now I wake up, I go to the chicken houses, I'm focusing on my animals. So I love that now. What about farming appeal to you? Oh, it appears as a business. It's a, uh, it's a career, yes, but it's a business also. So I'm just so happy in farming. You started farming full time in 2016. Yes. And then I look around and this is a sizable enterprise. Yes. How did you get here? Uh, to do farming, you must have passion, first thing. I'm a person who likes to read. So my mentor, it was through the books I was reading. When I want to do a thing, I read. And after, then I approached the a a ARC. It's where I get a lot of knowledge from ARC. And I also approached TUT, main campus, so that I further my education with agriculture. That is quite inspiring. Yes. And now we know that farming can be so unpredictable. Yes. And you faced a hailstorm before that killed all your chickens yeah. and some of your cattle. Yeah. It, what? How do you recover from something like that? Oh, it wasn't an easy thing to do because I was just down. But I told myself I want to do farming. And you know, sometimes God will give you challenges to see whether you are strong. And I just go back. And I built houses, three houses there for the layer chickens. And I put 2,005 chickens. And from there, I, I go. Now at the moment, it's 2021. I've got 48,000 chickens. And also I, now I'm busy building three structures of which one of those structures will be carrying 25,000 layer chickens. So it will be 25,000 times three. Wow. So I'll be adding by the end of this year another 75,000 layer chicks. Wow. Yes. That is very impressive. I yes. mean, you're not just a successful businesswoman, no. but you're also an award winner. Yes, it's, I win. Talk to us ah, about those awards. 2014, I win the Best Female Farmer. 2014, with Department of Agriculture. 2019, I went back. I win with Department of Agriculture, second runner. And the very same year, 2019, I go to Protective SA. Mm -hmm. I win province and national, the first run. So 2020, there was nothing. It was a COVID. But when everything is done, I'm going back. You're going I back. Know. <laughs> now, what advice would you have for aspiring female farmers out there or just any other farmers out there? Oh, they must be strong 
and they mustn't be shaken with small things. Mm. You know, in farming, when you fall down, you wake up and take the dust, dust out and go. Yes. I love that. Yes. Oh, do you know, how do you balance it all? Running this farm and you also have a big family. How do yeah. you do it? Ah, oh, my kids are big. Mm. Yeah, and I've got two kids, those they like agriculture. Otherwise, others, the first one is a medical doctor. She doesn't want anything with farming. <laughs> wow. Another one is a civil engineering. So I'm just running my things equal. So who are the two that want to be involved in the farming? Yeah, it's my daughter. is a chartered accountant, mm. Jessica Mukoshi. And also my grandson, Bokang Mukoshi and Opelu Mukoshi. Those ones are the ones those that are in they are with me in farming. God. I'm preparing for them actually. So then they must <laughs> carry the battle. <laughs> you said you up. want to retire at 60. Yeah, no, not great. at 60. Is it before 60? 58, I want at to 58. retire. That's yeah, and hand time. over. And by that time, I want all my houses, they must be finished. So that these kids, they must take the battle. You're showing a lot of strength and that's inspiring. Oh, thank <laughs> you, Lindy. <laughs> Engineers, medical doctors, chartered accountants. Wow, this family is on fleek. As you know, let me leave you to put your boots on because we have a lot of work ahead of us. And in the meantime, we will head out to speak to the husband of this successful woman. <laughs> Somebody who are not the ponelo too much. To all I na handen, to all I batang, I wish ang. We are all out. I shout if I talk go wa go wa. Chance le ukwa ni, chance le 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 planang or I or I wish ang. And then lo ko ja o feles asa ja. And then lo ena feles chile le buledi sana. Just very strictly on whatever I'm trying batang. If we na lebo thata, there is a dispute seriously. Ah, uh, feles chile buledi sebo Joshua le wana. Really, a party but in the end of the day, the fellows are Rutuani, Ranabar advice, Le Josha, Le Mara, Rona, and Remita Gulu, Eury, and Ivata. There's so much success on this farm and still so much more to achieve. When we come back, we'll find out more about Dinewa's farming practices and her goals for the future. Stay with us. Nancy, welcome back. I'm spending the day with Dineo Mokoshi, who has built these impressive laying houses behind me. And it's not stopping here. But where did she start? Let's find out. Ask Dineo, I, I promised the viewers I'd ask this question because you are the expert. Yes. But for you, Ask Dineo, which came first? Was it the chicken or the egg? No, my livestock is the one that comes first. Oh. Reason why I, I start with my, my livestock, because of I need a cash flow. And then I'm thinking so that I must do something. Mm. And 2013, I buy a structure that carries uh, 60,000 60, boiler chickens. But my structure, it was washed off the very same year with the chickens. And uh, 2014, I went to enter the best female farmer at the Department of Agriculture. Fortunately, I win that year. And I take that, that money. I also sell my bulls. I build these three houses. And fortunately, there was a tender that came to Ekuruleni for egg supply. And I go to that tender and I win again. So that tender needs about 100 bucks yes. a week, and I don't have, I've got only 2,005 chickens. And I went to outsource eggs at Mahalis. You can just imagine, I have to wake up 3 o'clock to go and outsource sure, eggs sure, sure. at Mahalis. But I was, I was okay because it's the work I love. And now I'm so happy because I've got 48,000. I have built houses from that tender. It helps me a lot. Wow, well done. 
Yes. What's the difference between boilers and layers? The boilers is the chickens that we eat, that we do like uh, meat, the, the bry packs. And the layers are the chickens those lay eggs. Mm. Yeah, it's two different things. You must know them. You cannot mix a boiler and the layers. It's impossible. If it's too. layers, it must be layers. What is the lifespan of a laying hen? Uh, the laying hen, the lifespan is 12 months. And after 12 months, we can sell them. The workers, they come to the farm, buy the chickens and go and sell. All right. Your main focus here is selling of eggs. Where do you sell yes, them? Yes, we sell our eggs. We give wholesalers, we give the hospitals, and we also give the prisons. Now you run a successful egg business over there and yet we are here and I'm seeing all this livestock. Is it not a hassle to run everything? Oh, no, is isn't. I start with my livestock before I can get to egg business. And reason why I've got the livestock is because this business, you can run one business, it must supplement another business. So if it's bad that side, I come this side. And I also have a lot of stocks filed, those they take meat from me. During December, I sell about uh, 80 cows in December, just for the stock files. <laughs> Goodness, you see mm. the importance of not putting all your eggs in yeah. one basket. No, you can't, you can't, you'll go down. That business is very tough. Sure. Egg business is very tough. And now you're in the process of purchasing a tractor. Yes. What is the importance of mechanizing? Reason of buying a tractor, I just wanted to minimize the cost. Because remember, I've got goats, sheep, and cattle, and also chickens, they eat maize. So I wanted also to supplement my chickens not buying from my own farm. Mm. Your cattle graze on communal land. Yes. Now, what is the importance of farmers working with the community for the greater good? Uh, in farming, you can't work alone. You must work with other farmers because there's a lot of challenges in farming. There's uh, livestock theft, there's uh, grazing. Our cattle graze one side, one place. So if you don't communicate, then it's a problem. And another problem, Mama Kore, when you're there at that communal land, the water where the cows drink is quite polluted. I mean, what is the solution for that? For my solution is that my cattle, they must drink water home. So the guy that is looking after the cattle, she knows she doesn't go to the, to make my cattle to drink water outside. They must come and drink water. Mm. I'm seeing all these different breeds. What breed of cattle is this? Oh, myself, uh, my cattle, it's white Brahma. But because of my cattle are grazing in communal land, that is the reason you can see different breeds. My grandparents had a subsistence garden and I noticed that you also have one too. Yes. So I'd love to go see what you grow. Okay, Let's go. we can go. <laughs> on the foundation of your next laying house. Here's to the 480,000 chickens in the future. There's so much love on Dineo's farm. Love for the land, love for the livestock, her family, and all of this without any help from the outside. But if you're like me and you need someone to hold your hand, don't worry, we have some expert advice after this. Stay with us. Welcome back, Mzansi, to African farming. On Dineo's farm, we learned that in order to grow a farming enterprise, you have to commit to it 100%. I personally was so inspired by the fact that Dineo learns constantly about farming through reading. 
we've invited some familiar faces and experts in agriculture to give us all advice. Our guests in studio are Globus de Toy from John Deere, Ginelue Nailana from Standard Bank, Sylvester Lubambo from Le Mang, and Dr. Taps Tapelo Makai from Elanco. Finding a market for our product is critically important. We heard that Dineo had to, at one point, resort to outsourcing to meet her obligations. She is doing really well at the moment. Sylvester, let me start with you. What is the importance of off-take agreements and how do we navigate around them? Off-take agreements assist uh, you to secure the market. That's, that's, that's one. Um, but also one produces enough already to, to, to supply to the market, so there's, there's, there's no wastage. However, one will always have to make sure that you secure a reputable off-takers. Um, because it's, 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 it's one thing um, taking the product, but it's also another thing in, in paying whatever is due to you. If it's not a reputable um, supplier, one will struggle to get the money. And you know that normally, your, your off-taker, so any supplier takes between 30 to 60 days to pay, and it goes back to, to your cash flow. It affects your cash flow because in the interim, while we haven't received no money, you need to be talking to your lenders that uh, they at least assist. Mm. So yeah, for, for, for one to, to, to really look at off-takers, one needs to make sure that it is reputable off-takers. We know that biosecurity is critically important, especially in the poultry and pork industries. Dineo specifically chatted to me about this issue when I visited her. Now, Dr. Tubbs, how can we successfully implement biosecurity measures and why is it so important? So I would want to just quickly recap on what is biosecurity. Mm, yes. uh, I think it's important for biosecurity first and foremost, you try to stop diseases coming into your farm. And Maluti Ao Eloring Akaharaplasia, how you try to prevent them from leaving your farm. So basically, you contain. So, with biosecurity, it's important for farmers to know that, you know, once they decide to go get another animal, or if they bring chickens in, or whatever the case may be, they need to be able to quarantine the animals first before they can, you know, mix them with the already existing animals on the farm. Oh. the farmers need to be aware of is the fencing so that you know the animals just don't roam in and out of the farm the gate needs to be proper so that you know people don't just drive in and out of the farm in that way you're preventing diseases coming in and you're preventing diseases going out of the farm mm. so it's a very uh, extensive topic but just in a nutshell you know you try by all means to quarantine the animals before you uh, mix them with your already existing animals. Dineo dreams big and she is planning on aggressively expanding her operation in the years to come. At the center of this is financial planning. Ginelu, what advice do you have for farmers who are looking into expanding? Uh, with expansion is why. Why are you doing it? Have you identified a market or a market gap or are you expanding because your neighbors are expanding and don't want to be left out? Because for whatever reason you are doing it, expansion is money. That is a fact. Therefore, you need in-depth planning. Do your homework. Understand the value chain that you want to get into. You must know who are the role players, right? How does the market look like? And coming to what Sylvester has said, you, you are going to need capital. It takes money, as I've said. So you're going to need working capital. You're going to need some uh, capital requirements, maybe for buying land, if you are buying land or processing plant. And if you're exporting, you're also going to need some trade finance to support you. That is why you need a reliable financial partner to work with you this journey. And in expansion, remember, there's also horizontal and vertical, really. So you must decide where are you going. With horizontal, you're doing more of the same thing that we've been doing. And with vertical, there you are adding value. It's more like processing. So do you have those skills? Because now you're not going to only need technical skills. You need also financial skills. So that's where the financial partner is very important. We're going to go for that. Dineo is now embarking on a more elaborate mechanization journey, considering investment in her own machinery. Many farmers see the value in mechanization and how it can improve their operations. Kwebis, what would you recommend, and especially for a farmer with mixed operations? Lenny, thank you very much. 
Yes, obviously, when we look at mechanization, it is important that you get the, cor right, the correct solution partner there. That is important because that is the, at the end, your partner in your business, like Sylvester showed, uh, shared with us earlier, that, that carry the worry in your, in your, da in your in daily operations. And that, that makes it important. So that mechanization leg of your business is expensive. So it's important. The planning around what horsepower on the farm, uh, because it's not, biggest is not always the best. Mm. It is the solution that will work on my farm. If we need to create additional legs, like we said, when we want to diverse, diversify, we need to make sure that I've got my power unit, my tractor, but I can do more than one um, operation within that, within my operations on my farm. Mm -hmm. So one thing. And the other thing, when it gets to crunch time, the timing is important. That solution partner need to be able to support me with aftermarket parts, service, and operator training. Also make sure that my operator is aware mm -hmm. of how to use this equipment in the right, in the right fashion and to give you the benefit of that product that you, that you put into your solution mix. Let's get some final thoughts. Let me start with you because you're right next to me, Kovas. <laughs> Let me thank you very much. I would say mechanization is a big step. So it's important that you make sure you get a reputable partner that understand the full spectrum of your business. Mm -hmm. That is your seasons, your crop, and then as well, have the ability to, have to get your equipment running during season if there is any challenges. So the main line, and like our, our panel um, friends here discussed it earlier as well, make sure you work with a strategic, reputable partner. Very important. Thank you. Dr. Taps? Yeah, so I think one, one takeaway message is that we need to remember, especially for the emerging farmers, is biosecurity. The importance of biosecurity is the importance of having a proper fencing around. That goes in line with what we've been talking about, you know, just planning your operations from the gate right until your books. So planning, very important. Biosecurity, very important. Kinelwe, what are your final thoughts? Uh, my advice to the farmers out there would be to manage your cost. You can consider uh, expanding backwards, which is uh, planting your own yellow maize and mixing your own feed. So somehow it will help you to manage your cost and maximize your profit. All right. But Sylvester, yeah, well. Kulum, it's my mail. Um, I'll say, although um, an off-taker is, is a good thing for a small farmer, um, it can also work to, to a farmer's disadvantage. Oma ingagwazi ugu deliver. However, it is, it, is, it is always good to have relationships with other farmers around you. So that whatever you produce, if there's a farmer next to you that can feed into that contract, we are able to have those negotiations. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much to our panel of experts for joining us in studio today. Mzansi, I hope you enjoyed the show. We wish Farmer Dineo well as she strives to grow her egg business tenfold. Engage with us on our social media platforms via hashtag African Farming. And you can find us on our website, africanfarming.com. Join us again next week. And Zanzi, do remember, we found better together.